Well, it's time to put a finish on the electric. The first thing I'm going to do is take a tack cloth and wipe it down. A tack cloth is basically a piece of cheesecloth soaked in shellac. It makes it sticky and it'll pick up any dust or dirt or foreign objects that are on the piece that you're going to finish. And shellac won't really interfere with any kind of finish that I'm aware of. It's been used for literally decades, if not centuries, to do exactly what it is that I'm doing here. The problem with what I'm doing is, is uh, I didn't clean the thing it's laying on. If you watch, you'll see me blow the dust off of it. Despite all of that, and my mistake with that, the finish is coming out really nice. And then the next thing I'll do is tape up the fretboard because I don't want finish on it. I want finish along the side of the fretboard along with the neck. But I definitely don't want to finish a rosewood fretboard. If it were maple, sure enough, but these are not made to be finished. And I'm taking my thumbnail and kind of pressing down around the each side of the frets so that I run less chance of finish seeping up under there and getting on the fretboard. There's always a little bit you have to clean up, but this takes care of most of it. And you see I've got the control plate or the control cavity cover plate as well because it needs finish just like the body does. I don't want to finish the very end of the fretboard there where the nut sets because I usually use a couple of drops of super glue or wood glue on the end grain of the fretboard there to glue the nut in place. Just enough to hold it still when you take the strings off of it, but not enough where it's difficult to get off if you need to do work on the instrument like fret leveling and things like that. Just making sure it's all down good. And I'll start finish on the back of the instrument and leave the front for last. And there I am wiping it back down with a tack cloth because I 
I'm going to finish it. I want to make sure I didn't get anything on it. Taping up the board and things like that. And I'm going to put me some gloves on. And I'm using Minwax polyurethane. I'm not using uh, wipe-on poly. I used wipe-on polyurethane for the acoustic guitar. I generally prefer to use nitrocellulose lacquer as a finish. I haven't found anything yet that looks as beautiful and as rich as that. But it's a six week process minimum to cure. And uh, this is uh, right into winter here. And I went out and did this today because I had a warm couple of days so that I can take this. This will cure in like, well, in 24 hours, it'll cure overnight and there won't be any. Uh, more off gassing or anything like that from this finish so I can hang it in my shed if the temperatures are okay overnight and then bring it inside in the morning with nitrocellulose lacquer it has to hang out there for four to six weeks until it stops off gassing because the gas is nitrocellulose lacquer cures from the outside in so it feels hard on the outside but it's still curing on the inside and during that time the gas is passed through the outer finish and it's poisonous so you don't want it in your home off gassing around your family for them to breathe in So I don't have a choice but to choose a different finish for this time of year because temperatures will be most of the time below freezing at night. Like, well, yeah, below freezing, below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So 30, 29 and such. That will crack and craze the snot out of finish. And it, that's not even counting what it would probably do to something like the guitar's neck. So that finishes out until warmer weather. And, you know, I, I considered it like an inconvenience. But I'm finding that it's helping me to learn how to work with different types of finishes than what I am comfortable with. I like the nitro. It's very, very forgiving and all of that. But learning to use these other finishes and get a good finish out of them is a plus. As a matter of fact, on the electric guitars, I might, this might end up being like my primary finish for electric guitars. It's hard. It's durable. It's pretty much bulletproof chemically. There won't be, you won't be having to worry about like with nitrocellulose lacquer and things like shellac that have been used for, uh, ages on musical instruments they have reactions to certain uh, chemicals like uh, with the nitrocellulose lacquer a lot of times there have been a lot of very nice martins that somebody's put them in the case and you know laid the strap down in the case and laid the guitar on top of the leather strap and the tannins and stuff in the leather 
melted the finish. Or they hung it on a guitar stand that wasn't approved for nitrocellulose lacquer and the chemicals in the plastics that the foam and stuff were made out of for that stand ate through the nitrocellulose lacquer on that guitar. So, you know, when you use finishes like that, there's a price you pay for that, and that is that that finish is not as durable in a lot of ways as more modern finishes are. With the electric guitar, I don't have a single bit of problem using polyurethane as a finish. It all comes down to how much of that stuff are you going to be gooping on the guitar. And for me, I'm not going to put a lot on it. And, you know, if I were in business, the very first thing I would do is tell people it would be in the contract that, look, this is a thin finish. The instrument is designed to wear with age. And that is a part of the instruments that I build because I don't want an eighth of an inch thick or a sixteenth of an inch thick plastic finish all over my instruments. I don't care or, or even natural cellulose lacquer. I want the thinnest finishes I, I can get and I don't really care that it's not as durable. It's better for the instrument. It's better for the sound. It's better for the way it feels. And I think it looks better. I like using these sponges to apply the lacquer with. It's probably one of the best, th well, not lacquer, polyurethane. But it's probably one of the best ways I've figured out how to do this. Another is like a really nice terry cloth, like towel pieces of that really lay out a very nice polyurethane finish. But the the uh, sponges leave little air bubbles that you've got to make sure you get up. But the sponges are cheaper than like the, the terry cloth or the uh, bath cloth or bath towels or whatever they cost more than a pack of sponges do. And I'm really digging the uh, grain of that ash on the back of that instrument. That's flipping gorgeous. And now we go to the top. The walnut is absolutely beautiful as well. That sap line that runs down the center joint looks beautiful as well. I'm glad that I did not put a pit guard on this wood.
and I dropped that on the control panel so let's smooth that back out I think this is going to be a very beautiful instrument uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the pickups sound like I uh, they were given to me and they look like there was a uh, I can't remember whether it was Kramer or uh, uh, one of the other kind of heavy metal type guitars in the 80s but I could never figure out where the pickups what they were my stepson gave them to me but they look like a set of pickups that were made in kind of like a semi-custom kind of super strat that uh, they made back then one of the companies like Kramer or uh, I can't believe I can't think of the other company that Charvel and and another couple of companies uh, did the, the metal, the shred metal kind of 80s super strat kind of deals uh, back then and they look like pickups that I have seen that were supposed to have gone in them and I'm doing the headstock now and so I don't know if they are or not but I'm gonna have fun I think with them when I get everything put together but that will be at a later date it will be cold again I need to apply more finish to this